Joe in Biloxi, Mississippi. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And today I get to make one of the coolest pair of reading glasses, I guess you could call them. These are invisible bifocals. It has no prescription in the top and just the full strength of the reading at the bottom. So you don't have to take reading glasses on and off all day while you're working. And I'm going to install them into the Oakley gas can. This is model number 9014, color 856, 60 eye size with a 15 bridge. And actually, before I get started, let me set that down. I have to do everything this way. I am an authorized Oakley dealer. I'm just not allowed to put them on the website. The individual frames with the individual prices. So if somebody wants to contact me, I can sell them that just like Joe did and everyone before him. I can do any sunglasses. I can do any of the semi realness where there's only a frame at the top and nothing at the bottom. I have the completely rimless, the gauge. You've seen the videos for that. I've got all the plastic frames. I've got all the metal frames, the metal sunglasses, the plastic sunglasses. I can do regular lenses. I can do mirror lenses. I can do transitions extra active with the mirror coatings, which you saw me do yesterday. This time I'm only going to do the invisible bifocal with transitions gray in the gas can so let me take everything out of the original packaging as it comes and you're going to get all the manufacturer original packaging when i ship to you now the sunglasses do not come with a hard case well some of them do these some of them don't i just don't know oakley well enough to say which ones do and which ones don't this one comes with the carrying bag which doubles as the cleaning cloth and of course they come with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping i'm gonna put that on there when i ship to you this is the Oakley gas can, color 856. Again, this is the 60 eye size with the 15 bridge. And great wrap around sunglasses. It's got some curvature to it, some wrap. So I had to order specifically designed lenses to match the curvature there. And blocks the side light. Great all around practical frame. Again, anybody wants one, you can either email me or call me and I will make it happen. Tell me what, so well, of course this only comes in one size, but for any other Oakley, tell me which size you want, which color, which model, size and color, and I'll make it happen. I'll get you a price. And of course, you know, my, my deal, and I'll know there's people out there on eBay and doing stuff they shouldn't be doing, but I sell everything at the MSRP, the manufacturer suggested retail price, but then you get free prescription lenses when you buy the frames for me. So that's how I do it. I do exactly what the frame companies tell me. I'm going to pop out your original demo lenses, but none of the lens companies tell me how I have to sell the, what price to sell the lenses for. That's why I give them away free. Now I'm going to put the, this frame, I'm proud because of the curvature, I'm only going to trace one lens. And let's go ahead and barcode this into the computer, Secret Agent 1193. So years from now, if you ever do need distance prescription in the top and you're reading at the bottom, I can mail the lenses right to your home and I'll show you how to pop them in. So we're going to trace only the right lens. The little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame. Oh, didn't like that. Let me help it. Let me help it. Some of these high wrap frames are tricky. I am more stubborn. So... All right, back up. It freezes for a moment. Let's help it. There we go. Any way to make this thing back up? There we go. There we go. Nope, didn't like that either. Okay, let's go to plan B. Let's go to plan B. Yeah, I know you didn't like that. Tracing table defect. If the problem persists, contact your maintenance technician. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to trace just the right lens. I'm going to put two dots on the lenses. Nothing throws you off of your game when you've been doing this as long as I have. When you're as good as me. Make sure everything's lined up in there perfectly, and it is. So I put two lines, two dots on there on a horizontal meridian. I'm going to pop out the original demo lens. This time I'm going to trace, grab a little tool where I can trace just the right lens. The reason why I put two dots on there, it's going to line up with the dots that I put there. Getting everything lined up. I apologize if anything is out of camera angle. Because I can't see what you guys are seeing. So trust me, I'm just doing a good job on this, alright? That's all you need to know. 
the kit is good. So now we're going to place this in here and it's going to trace, go around and trace the outside of the right lens. Let's do this again. We're going to trace the right lens. And the width of the bridge is 15. It's going to ask me for that since it's not tracing both sides and measuring for me. So this time the stylus is going to pop up and it's going to go around and trace the outside radius of the lens. The outside circumference. Sorry, I didn't know I was going to be testing on grammar for this. Of course, here at freeprescriptionlenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality, you buy any frame from me. This time it happens to be a genuine Oakley frame, and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non prescription fashion lenses. A lot of people buy glasses for me that have no prescription in there. My federal ID has my my receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance, health savings account, unused flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they're prescription or not. So the computer starts at 32.5, which happens to be the pupillary distance for your right eye, so I don't have to do anything. I do want to raise the optical center up to where the seg height, as it's known, for where the invisible bifocal will begin at 19.5. I've gone ahead and prepped your lenses. I've got three dots on there. One of them is the opticals let me get the dust off there so I know which dot is which come on which one are you which one are you I'm clean you off of course I know what that one is so this is a block or as I like to call them Jenny from the block I need to attach this to your lens so I need two double-sided adhesive stickers of which I've got two right here the black side is the sticky side I'm gonna line that up right there first do the same thing now on the other one on the back is a silver button that is a magnet it's gonna do its job twice the first time it's gonna attach itself to another magnet there in the arm Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Let's get these, change it to a progressive layout. That is your pupillary distance, the optical center that's going to sit directly in front of your pupil. These other two dots tells me that it's oriented in there perfectly. Just want to make sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame, and it is. And hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the unright lens. The left lens, pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet, your pupillary distance for your left eye, 31.5. So I'm going to tap this minus button twice because it's going to come down in half millimeter increments. 32, 31.5, same optical center height. Get everything lined up perfectly. We've got a few extra dots on there. Let me study and see what is what. And we are good to go again double check the lens is large enough to fit i always order them larger than need be to avoid anything happening and delaying shipping hit that button the arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens now this is the edger this is what's going to do all the work while i run my mouth it costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out buy their own put it on your own kitchen counter then you can cut your own lenses and then you can struggle with cutting high wrap frames at home and you won't have to hire the guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. So let's wake up the computer. With that button, we're transferring the data from there onto here. That is the shape that I'll be cutting. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that. But we're going to say with polycarbonate. The other thing, because it traced one lens, it's thinking it's a semi-rimless. I want to change that and put a V-shaped bevel onto the lens. And before I forget, I want to... Let's go two tenths of a millimeter larger because I know from experience I need to do that in high wrap frames. Let's go ahead and you can always cut more off. You can never add it back on. So let's go a quarter of a millimeter larger. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens. I'm only going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. Ding! Turn the page. Press that on there firmly. Now the magnet is going to do its job a second time. It's going to hold it in place into the Chuck. Or as I like to call it the Charles because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Yeah, I know. I know. And, you know, they say to be an expert in something on YouTube now, you have to have 10,000 hours of experience. I've got probably 20,000 hours of experience cutting lenses. So that's why you want a guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. Two thumbs and 20,000. got 10,000 hours on each thumb. How about that? Hit the green start button, the door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two whites. Actually, hang on, hang on, stop, stop, stop. We're going to do something differently now on this one. Do something differently on the high wrap. 
usually this button which I never talk about that says auto I'm gonna put it on manual there's a little hand there like the shape of Michigan I'm gonna do this manually normally was you see it'll trace the shape of the right side of the frame first time around making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame and you can see as it's tracing the shape and then the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know where to place the bevel except I'm gonna manually override that this time I could change where the front bevel of it you can see if you could take the lens and open it up and fillet it to where it was like this all the way around I can see the diameter going all the way around the lens I could cut it on the front bevel the back bevel I could do a percentage 50 50 I would have 1.18 millimeters on the front 1.19 millimeters from the back but I'm going to do it on the curvature of the lens on the base curve it's measuring a 5.2 at these places and I'm going to do that because the wrap of the frame <coughs> hit the green arrow at your start again the, the cutting wheel is starting up in a moment you'll see water spraying in the background polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic high index plastic and Trivex lenses cut wet meaning this water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle now water will spray onto this lens only for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris that you'll see beginning to form in just a moment. Now, polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lenses. The same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones, more than likely wearing Oakley frames because Oakley provides the US military with their frames. But the reason they have the polycarbonate is that, as I mentioned, it's an unbreakable material, so it protects their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris. Speaking of protection, it also offers 100% UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin there in Biloxi, Mississippi, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. This is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. So again, it is putting the bevel placement slightly at an angle to follow the curvature of the lens. Now I will activate the transitions portion of the lens at the end. But these are the Essilor, 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 Essilor Ideal Advanced. I am an Essilor guy, a great company to deal with from the cradle to the grave. They take care of their vendors such as myself. This is a top tier premium digital freeform lens. Again, this will have no power in the top and only a plus two reading in the bottom. So a little lever came out at the end of that lever is a spinning wheel, a little grinding stone, something you find at the end of a Dremel tool. And that's what's applying a safety bevel to the rear concave surface of the lens. Should any portion of this lens protrude from the back surface of the frame, which it won't. It's more critical with the higher powers that I cut for free all day long. But if any, con com any portion of the lens comes in contact with the face, the back surface of the lens will be nice and smooth. Although part of the reason I do that, even though none of this lens will protrude from the frame, when I push it into the lens, you can see there's a little bit of schwarf there, optical sawdust. I'm gonna use my thumbnail to clean that off. And you can't really tell, but the bevel that is there, let me see, can't see what you guys are seeing, but the bevel that is there is closer to the front of the lens and it's steeper going towards the back. Because I cut it on a high wrap to go into a high wrap frame. I can't do a regular V bevel or I might push it towards the front. So again, I tuck the lens. We'll see if it actually fits this time. Tuck it in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs pressed down, it goes in there perfectly. The kit is good. And I even went large because a lot of times with these wrapped frames, if you don't cut it large enough, a normal thing would, would pop out easily. This one is not coming out. So let's go ahead and start cutting the left lens. Flip that over to L. Use my thumbs to press the block on there firmly. Hit the green arrow, which is start. Just like before, the clamp shuts, the door closes, then the clamp shuts. And then again, the lens is going to be traced by two wide styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the left side of the frame this time. 
measuring the thickness of the lens at every point. If this were automated, it would place the bevel for me, but I have overridden it. And again, I'm going with, um, and I always make a note in red. Here's my high tech system. Cut on 5.20 front base curve. There you go. So in the future, I can resort back to this and know exactly what to do next time around. Hit the green arrow. Now, as I mentioned, no edge thickness whatsoever, but part of the reason I do the safety bevel on the back of the lens, let me pop the block off, drop that back in there, take the sticker off it is no longer needed, add that to my sticker collection. Go ahead and get this and dry it off. But let me, again, years from now, should you ever need new lenses for this frame or anyone else out there who has a gas can, who would like to have lenses, I can cut them for you based on what's programmed into the computer. I'm going to enter this in my database so I won't need the frame anymore. Of course, for Joe's, I have it in there, but to take the old lenses out, you almost pull up on the top of the frame and using your thumbs push outward. They're going to come right out. Now to put the lens in there, I turn the frame around. I have the side I'm working on closest to me. Elbows touching my sides, arms bent at a right angle. I tuck the lens in at the outside corner first. And the reason why I push down the nose, this is the thickest portion of the frame. So anytime I exert force, I want to do it at the thickest portion. Now some people out there will tell you, oh, a little optical sawdust there, will tell you to push it in at the nose first and then push down here. And you can, you'll develop your own technique. That's just how I do it. So, and as my wife likes to tell me, you're not doing it right. So we're going to come down here, your prescription, Plano in both eyes, no power whatsoever, zero power. So I'm going to put it in over that black dot and read the prescription. And when I get that in there, I get three skinny spherical lines as well as three thicker astigmatic lines at the same time. They all come into focus at the same time on zero. So you have no power whatsoever. Your full power is in the bottom of the lens for your reading portion. He was telling me he's a mechanic. He gets tired of taking his reading glasses on and off when he's working on cars and doing paperwork, looking up at monitors or other things. So you have no... If, even if you see through there, that should be actually clear when you look at my print. Only the very bottom is going to change the power when you do that. So clear non-prescription lenses. The same power that's in these non-prescription lenses at the top. And you have plus two at the bottom reading. I've been doing some invisible bifocals this week. Everyone went and got old like I did. I wear them too. Same lens that I'm wearing. Yours just has more curvature than mine. Let's take the lens out, dry everything off. The other thing I'm going to do that I notated, let's wait to do it, make sure it's right on this side. And then I'm going to make one more note on your paperwork. Tuck the lens in at the outside corner first, push down the nose, it snaps right in, that is perfect. Take that off, dry that off, pull the sticker off, and I'm going to note that I cut it plus 0.25 of a millimeters big. We're going to come down here to the lensometer, put it in over that dot. If all goes well, I don't have to turn the dial. I'm getting the same prescription, zero prescription. I'm going to measure your pupillary distance, 32.5 for the right, 31.5 for the left. So that's 64. Let me, 31, 32 is 63 plus two halves is 64. Turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens. And then we measure on the left, we're getting 64 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. I want to check your optical center height is 19.5 to the bottom there, and that it is. So, again, this is the portion of every video that as I clean your lenses, I mentioned that you get free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And, of course, I should also point out this purchase is tax-free, but you also get free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too light too loose or too tight however there's an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that's because of 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and i am no exception let me use this cleaning cloth but i'm going to get these in standard alignment first but because 80 percent of people have one ear that's higher than the other just stop by your local place and tell them if it's too loose or too tight or too high on one side 
and they'll know what to do. It only takes about 30 to 45 seconds to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly. Now, I send out a selfie request to have your picture on the website, but I also send out cleaning instructions, not only on your frame and lenses, but for the cleaning cloth that I'll provide, your Oakley cleaning cloth, so those two will last you for years. And I just had a request for someone for me to explain that, and I think I will. Usually it's a trade secret, but I'll let you guys know. So, this is what your lenses look like clear the first time they've been used. I'm going to go ahead and activate them. You can see the Ray-Ban emblem in the back. You can see as it changes focus from the magnification at the top to nothing at the bottom. So, I'm going to expose these to a strong burst of ultraviolet light in my little transitions box. And as you can see, all transition lenses get dark on day one. It takes about 30 to 45 seconds for them to darken all the way. A little bit longer when you come back inside. 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Joe, pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one. It continues to darken every day for the first two weeks they're exposed. After that, they'll work for years at maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day. That's why they don't turn dark in a car. They're also temperature sensitive, meaning they will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I'd like to remind everyone that when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. Now this time of year, they'll get real dark, become the dog days of summer next July and August. They just won't get as dark as they will this time of year. Now if you see I'm actually rocking these back and forth because of the angle, the wrap, the UV light does not focus them on them evenly so I'm rotating it to try and evenly get the lenses dark. If I just left it in the center, the center part would be much darker in this box. Outside you never have to worry about it. But while it's in that box these edges would not be as dark. See it even did it on that little corner there so that's why I did that. But that's the first time they've been activated. Don't worry, they're going to keep getting darker and darker. Come on, Joe. We talked about that. Don't you remember? Stay with me. Pay attention. I'm just messing with you, Joe. I'm effing with you. So if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as FreePrescriptionLenses.com. On Twitter as FreeRxLenses. If you have any questions, you, you can hit the Contact Me button on the website, although some people say they're having problems getting through. So you can email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Or better yet, leave your question or comment in the comment section below. I'll answer it there, and other people get a chance to read from your inquisitive nature in case they may have, you may come up with a question that they didn't even think of. So you can see that as it keeps lightning as I keep talking, and as it will, and it'll return back to virtually clear within you know another 30 seconds or so. But Joe in Biloxi, Mississippi, I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut the invisible, the Essilor Ideal Advanced Invisible Digital Freeform Progressive Lens. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Now this frame sells for $150. Again, I have to charge the manufacturer's MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price. Then I'll take care of you on the lenses, free single vision lenses, free non-prescription lenses. You only pay for transitions or anti-glare or polarized. Now, you did pay for the invisible bifocal. I can't give those away for free. Again, this is Essilor's most expensive lens, so I only charge $149 for it. Most places charge well over $300 for the same lens. I charge $69.99 for the transitions that, again, are almost lightening up all the way. So the frame's $150, the lens is $150, the transition's roughly $70. Minus a few pennies, so it comes out to $369.98, tax-free, and again, free shipping anywhere in the U.S. I'm repeating myself, but since I can't put these on my website, if you guys want an Oakley frame, just email me. Let me know what model, size, and color. I'll quote you a price. Of course, it's the same price that's on the Oakley website, but I'll give it to you. Did I mention I make free prescription lenses? I think I did once or twice in there. But that's it. So again, thank you for watching. Joe, thank you for your purchase, and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.